Hey everyone, Upstart is an artificial intelligence company that uses AI to make lending decisions. The company's long-term prospects are phenomenal in terms of the potential. But can the company get there is the big question mark. The company announced second quarter 2024 financial results that sent the stock price soaring higher. I'll review those latest developments and update my recommendation for Upstart stock and let you know if I think it's a buy, hold, or a sell. Let's get into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So management turned optimistic in the latest quarter saying that the guidance released today demonstrates we're on track toward resuming our role as the fintech known for high growth and healthy margins. The improvements in our business are coming from significant advances in our AI model, a revitalized funding supply, and increased operational efficiency. So if you aren't aware of Upstart's history and you haven't been following the company for years like I have, let me provide a brief overview of Upstart's previous five-year history. The company absolutely thrived during the earlier days of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021 as consumer balance sheets were robust and the odds of a recession were extremely low. Therefore, lenders were making loans on the platform robustly. They were not hesitant to make loans. Fast forward to the economic reopening and the rising and increasing interest rates by the Federal Reserve, which spooked lenders on the Upstart platform. And they pulled back and they said, we don't want to make more loans using this AI model because we're a little bit hesitant now. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates. We don't know if there's going to be a recession. And your AI model, while it sounds cool, while it sounds interesting, it doesn't have the decades of data that we do with traditional lending models. And so lenders on the platform pulled back and that caused the business to severely face downturn. So now today, the company saying, or August 6th, I should say, in their latest update, management saying that things are looking up again so let's take a look all right so management saying that total revenue came in at 128 million which was down six percent from the same quarter last year 143,900 loans were originated which was also down six percent from the same quarter last year and then finally net income decreased to negative 54 and a half million from negative 28.2 million in the same quarter the prior year. So clearly when we look at the current quarter's results, the company's turnaround is not yet taking shape. But management sees something happening right now, perhaps between the time this update was released and the time they made the comments, that gives them confidence to raise their expectations for the second half of the year, which is what they did. The forward-looking guidance is what had investors optimistic about upstart stock. So management saying that revenue will be 150 million in the third quarter, which will be up from 128 million from the second quarter, and the net loss will improve to 49 million. What's more, management expects revenue of 320 million for the second half of the year. And if you're getting 150 million in Q3, that means they're forecasting 170 million in revenue for Q4. So they're expecting to go from 128 million in revenue to 150 million in revenue to 170 million in revenue. Very robust growth from Upstart, unlike what they've delivered over the past year, year and a half, ever since the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates, they haven't demonstrated that kind of growth. So I can understand why management is optimistic now. Moreover, they are forecasting positive EBITDA in the fourth quarter. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And so the company really expecting strong, strong performance in the second half of the year. And I'm curious as to why they've turned so optimistic about the second half of the year. Given that the 
economic, the macroeconomic data in the last week or two has not been very positive. We've had an increase in unemployment claims. We've had a decrease in job growth. And the risks of a recession have mildly increased over the last week or two, given the slowing consumer environment. So one of the selling points for Upstart is their AI model is better at determining credit risk than traditional lending models. Now, for me, this is not proven yet because for me, in order for a lending model to be proven, you've got to demonstrate data going back a couple of recessions. And we haven't had a recession since Upstart has you know, been in business. So they don't have enough history of data in order to prove that it's better. But they suggest, they say that their model has higher approvals than traditional models. And then with the same approval rates, they can offer lower interest rates. So both on making more loans and then offering lower interest rates for loans, they are better than traditional models, according to Upstart, right? According to Upstart. And they will suggest that it's their AI model with all of its parameters makes better decisions. And while that might be true, I just don't know yet. I just don't know yet. And I can't be confident that it is true until we've been through at least one recession and I see the data on their AI model and the default rates and how that compared to traditional lending models during that most recent recession and then compare the two and then I can be more confident in the accuracy and the effectiveness of their AI model. Now I talked a little bit earlier about why Upstart's management is more optimistic about the second half of the year. And it could be because Upstart operates its own macro index, which I have highlighted here. And this chart, when it's going up, it's bad news for Upstart. It means potentially more defaults on the loans that it's made. And when it's moving down, it's good news for Upstart. It means that the potential for default is lower. And what you'll notice here is a significant downward move in the upstart macro index, the UMI, and that could be one reason why upstart's management is significantly more confident about the second half of their fiscal year 2024. And then I highlighted earlier that the company has a massive potential opportunity here. The marketplace, the total addressable market is $3 trillion of loan originations annually. Personal loans are a $145 billion market, and this is Upstart's primary market right now. This is where they primarily operate, but they are expanding into auto and home, which is a growing part of their business, but it's still a small fraction of their business. If they can expand more penetration into those bigger markets, that could be a huge opportunity, and it all depends on that AI model. If that model proves effective, it could be a sudden rush of lenders jumping onto the platform to utilize the platform because the AI model is effective and lenders can feel confident. And so they'll put on more capital in their marketplace because they see it as a good risk versus return. Now, Upstart's stock price jumped following this earnings release because of how optimistic management was about the second half of the year. The stock price was trading at below $25 per share before the earnings release. It's now trading at $34.64. Upstart is now trading at a forward price to sales of 4.282, which is about the higher end this stock has traded for in 2024. This is about the highest valuation it's reached in 2024. I've had Upstart stock rated as a hold uh, and I last updated that recommendation on May 22nd and I'm keeping the stock rated as a hold here. While I am encouraged about their forward expectations, I still want to see them execute on those expectations and it's still too much of a risk for the reward at this point. The reward is absolutely massive if Upstart does get this right, but it's also a huge risk as well. So 
there's just too much variation, too much variability in the potential outcomes at this point for me to recommend the stock as a buy. So for now, I'll keep it rated as a hold. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.